Good morning everyone, or good day from down under. Um, thought I'd go through a brief edit with you guys um, from the shoot that I did just the other day. I thought I'd take you through it just to show you um, uh, the type of thing I was thinking when I took this shot and also how the, the shot was actually uh, made. So I thought we'd go through that together. Uh, I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes or so for everyone to log on um, because uh, this wasn't scheduled. So. Uh, just looking at who's coming in at the moment, we've got Joris is here, so say hi guys if you are actually watching at the moment. Uh, what is it, it's early, it's 9.29 on Saturday morning here um, in Australia. Obviously it's all other times overseas, I'm just going to put this on silent so we don't get interrupted. Mario's here as well, g'day Mario, nice to see you on board. Um, I'll show you all the image in a few minutes that I'm going to edit, I've done sort of a finished one and then I'm just going to edit it briefly with you guys. Hi, Ario. Uh, and then, I mean, it probably won't look exactly the same, but I just thought I'd take you through a quick edit. Uh, I've then got to start trying to do more of this um, shoot that I did the other day and start the video component of it that I also did as well. So, uh, Reuven's here, Martin's here. G'day, Martin. Uh, Jeff's also here, Ahmad's here. Um, Reuven's off to pick up my A7 III shortly. Woohoo! Ooh, you're gonna love it. It's so it's such a good camera. I've been so happy with my camera I still haven't been able to update the firmware yet though, which is frustrating. I'll have to have another look at that today uh, Peter's also here uh, Coming in on board too guys if you can too if you could please give me a thumbs up There's quite a number watching now. Uh, we'll get more over onto the live um, chat So if you could please do that That would be fantastic um, I'm gonna give it about another minute and then we'll start um, I'm here in tra until traffic at 4.05, let's, uh, oh, let's up, okay, so you're waiting until the traffic lets up. <laughs> um, Raven's saying, can't wait, I bet you can't. Look, you're going to absolutely adore that camera, it's fantastic. The interesting thing was, I thought I shot this with the A7, I did most of the shoot with the A7 III, but this shot is actually done with the A7R2, so it's, it's one I haven't looked at for a while, so we're going to look at that, and um, I'm going to do a lot of recovery and everything on this shot, so you're going to see in a minute what's going to happen anyway. Um, Cody's here from Cleveland, Ohio, just got the A7 III and the 85GM, oh, it's fantastic Cody, you are going to adore it, what a great setup that you've got there. Um, yeah, so please guys, there's uh, 20 on watching now, we're obviously going to get a lot more, but please if you can give me a big thumbs up. I'm just going to go to the Osler Images logo. Um, now let me put down here, because I'm going to put the time when I'm starting these, just so people won't get upset. Because they always say I end up taking too long on these videos, so I'm now putting in timelines. Um, so I'm just going to go to the logo now, and then we'll uh, get started. So hang on for a second. G'day everyone, uh, coming in to do another live editing with you all. Um, I've had a number of people ask about this. I am going to take you through this whole shoot uh, eventually sometime next week. Um, but I have just edited one yesterday and I'm going to show you that one in a minute just so that you can see what it actually looks like. Uh, we've got a stack of people now on board about to watch. So I'm going to do a, an edit in Lightroom and Photoshop and I'm also going to show you how I created the image so that you can sort of get an idea about uh, what I was thinking when I actually took this shot because it was a very challenging shot. Um, but I'm going to show you the image first. Now, with the um, questions, guys, if you can, I've just noticed a lot of people are saying they're, they're getting the Ace uh, 7 III here, and that's all fantastic, and I, I bet you all can't wait. Um, try, because I'm going to try and keep this down to as short as possible. I, I will add a little bit of a question time at the end there, but if you can, try and keep it related to the... Um, the thing that I'm actually showing you, and I'll have another Q&A later on, or if you want to, throw a lot of these questions down below if you'd like to ask, and I'll answer them later for you. Uh, I wanna try and keep this discussion sort of specific to the editing uh, process that we're actually going through, but if you do have any other questions, join the Facebook group, because you can add us there in the Photography and Videography School. That's a great place to also ask all these questions, and I do always answer them, or leave them down below, and I'll get back to you there. If you have specific questions about what I'm going to be doing in the edit, put them into here under at David Osler, and we'll discuss that at the end. I'll just open it up for a little bit of question time. So I'm going to show you the images anyway that uh, we that I'm going to edit. 
Um, so this is the actual image here. Now let me just blow this up for a little bit for you, and then I'll reduce it a bit later. So this is the image that I'm actually going to edit with you guys. Um, and when you see the original image, you'll see how challenging th this image actually was. Because the thing that we have to uh, watch when we're editing an image like this, I've done two versions of this, it's the same image. I've cropped that to show these beautiful lights and that gorgeous um, window that's behind Kiara. Um, but I also wanted to keep the, the detail in these lights and not overexpose everything. Uh, and the second one I've just cropped in because I wanted to sort of have another, let me just reduce, get rid of these um, things so you can see it. Um, the second one was I've just cropped in so it's a little bit tighter on Kiara, uh, which might be nice for the florist and also uh, the jeweler, the um, shop that supplied the jewelry so that they can actually start to see, uh, you know, their jewels and stuff like that as well. And, and obviously you can see the flowers a little bit better too. So that, that's the image. I adore it. Uh, I really love the mood and lighting and I'll show you in a minute exactly how I created this and then we'll edit it. But so that's, that's the one. I mean, I do love this crop actually because it's, I love the, the lights up the top there. Really, I think it's just beautiful. Um, but anyway, I'm going to edit it as that, as you see there. So I'll show you now the originals. Um, and these are the two originals. So I'm going to make this now a little bit smaller so that you can see what we're doing. Let me just keep coming down. I'll leave it about there, I think. Is that the whole thing? Yeah, it's just about the whole thing. Okay, so you can see now how dark the actual original is. So if you look, if you notice when you're looking at the lights up the top in the window, there's a faint, really faint um, area on there where it's actually clipping, and that's the red part that you can actually see. If I come down over here and grab the highlights, you can see if I bring it up, you can see where it's clipping. That's because I've got the highlight clip warning on. Um, if I wanted to sort of take that out, I could just drop that a little bit, but it, it's the detail is still there, so I haven't got rid of the detail. It's just showing that there's potentially a, a fraction of clipping that's, that's in that highlight area um, there. Now I might, let me get rid of these questions because I might be able to make this bigger for myself. So bear with me a minute just while I try to get this a bit bigger and then I can reduce it. No, it's not going to work. I do have to keep it that size so you can see all the, the actual editing tools. Okay, that'll do anyway. So now this is the two images. Now it's going to be very hard for you to see and I knew here I wanted to actually shoot this with continuous light because I didn't want to use flash in this scenario because I was worried that if I use too much flash it's going to destroy the ambient um, and it's if if I lit Kiara, Kiara up enough uh, it would have left a shadow behind potentially so I wanted to just basically use and this is where Sony is so fantastic that they've got the recovery ability in their raw files to be able to pull these sort of things back so I've shot one image like that which was straight for um, the window and the uh, lighting that you can sort of see just above. The second image over here, Kerry now has moved in with two ice lights and you can see how immediately she's lit Kiara up. So these are straight out of camera guys. All right, so nothing has been changed. The issue is I couldn't use that one obviously because I would have the window, uh, Kerry's blocking the window and you can see the ice lights and everything else. So I haven't used a tripod here. I wanted to move fairly fast. I had to get through this very fast. So I had no tripod, I was hand holding uh, the, the camera and I just took two shots. Now I've asked Kiara to keep as still as she possibly can. Um, so then I'm going to actually um, uh, have these a little bit later on. Once you can collapse the, yeah, the, yeah I will in a minute. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to show you the two images down the bottom just so you could sort of see them. Uh, let me get rid of that now. Okay, um, so they're the two images that I'm actually looking at. Um, I'll, I'll bring it back up for the moment. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to edit one of these and I'm going to edit the base one and then I'm going to copy those settings over to the second one because they're basically the same. The only difference between the two of them is that um, I've had K 
Kerry uh, light her up with the ice light. And I'll tell you the exposure if we look at it. The exposure was 180th of a second. Now I'm using the 16 to 35 f4. So this obviously would have been a scenario where it may have been better if I had the 2.8 lens, uh, a wide angle lens. But again then, I'm not sure if I wanted to shoot f2.8 because I still wanted to have everything in focus. Like I wanted to see the beautiful detail in that window at the back. So that could have been an implication if I shot at f2.8. Um, although I was a little bit away from the camera, so the depth of field probably would have been still okay. But So I had to deal with what I had here. But I knew anyway that the dynamic range of the, these cameras are, are just incredible. So that's what I've shot with. I've shot with the A7R2 here. I've shot with uh, 1 80th of a second, F4, ISO 80. Now I could have put the ISO up, but I'm balancing exposure here and everything to try and keep the detail in that window at the back. So that's the issue I had with exposing this. So that's why I had to pick the ISO 80. Um, and it's using the 16 millimeter and it's the 16 to 35 f4. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to edit this image first uh, and we'll see what we can bring out of this. So I'm going to try and balance this as good as I can. Then we're going to move over and copy those settings to the second photo. Then we'll open up in Photoshop and I'll show you how I manipulated the image uh, roughly in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to increase the exposure on this image. Now I've just got to watch that when I bring this up, that I'm not going to start blowing out those highlights. So I can bring it up a fair way and I can still drop those highlights back down to keep detail. See, that's what I want to keep. I want to keep that detail in the, the windows. I don't want to lose any of that clipping at all because that's what the window color was actually like. So I'm, I'm probably going to leave it around here and then I'm going to really open up the shadows and I'm really going to open up the blacks. And again, I can just balance the exposure a little bit if I want to, and then just pull that highlight down again until I get the look. Now I need to take the exposure down just a touch. All right, so I'm probably gonna stick with something around there. So you can see, basically, I'm just gonna move my head off the control so that you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, where are we? All right, so you can see here that if um, if we look at it now, I've gone up plus 2.55 in the exposure. I've dropped the highlights down minus 94 to keep that detail in that highlight in the windows. I might just bring them up just a touch, somewhere around there. So that's minus 92. The shadows are plus 83 and the blacks are plus 22. Um, the only other thing I might add is just a touch of vibrance. Uh, in there and I do like a nice warm feeling in this so I'm going to grab it was on auto um, white balance I'm also going to grab the white balance and just push it just a touch towards the yellow because the room was very yellow in itself so I've pushed it a little bit over like that to get that type of look uh, in it now all I'm going to do now that I've got those two settings I'm going to copy those settings to the second one um, let me just reduce this back to what it was so it's completely set. So all I do is click on that one. I'm going to use the command key. I'm not sure what it is on the windows. It might be an option or something. Click the next one and I'm just going to say sync. And then I'm going to sync everything. I don't need crop, but I'm going to sync everything else. Now the two images then should be pretty close all right, to one another. You can just see that basically it's just Kiara in the one and then Kerry. You can see here how she's lighting Kiara up. So she's actually using two ice lights. Uh, just one in each hand and she's getting that light so it's grabbing Kiara and that's the secret to doing this with those ice lights it gives that lovely fill that I've actually got in there um, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these two images and I'm going to open them up in Photoshop so I just select both of them and I right click on the image up the top there and I say edit in and I'm going to open them as layers in Photoshop so that's the important thing that you actually have to do now the second we bring this up, you can see now it's building it up. It's going to have, have the two layers together uh, inside of Photoshop. If you have any questions that's strictly related to this, guys, you can fire away because I will answer them as we're going because I can see the, uh, the chat right next to me. So if you do have a question that you'd like to ask um, 
with this uh, fire away. Now there's a couple of things that I noticed straight away though that the there is an issue with this with um, the uh, lens is causing a little bit of distortion. Now to try and get around the distortion you've got to try and hold the the lens up as close as possible. Um, this is the lens here. Uh, it's on the A7R. Now, you, now the problem is the second if you twist this lens up or you twist the lens down at all the distortion will be way worse. The thing that you've got to try and do with this is to keep it centered to the model and the surrounding area that you're doing and not to twist either way. Now I couldn't keep it perfectly level so I've tried the best I can but you'll find that there's always going to be a little bit of distortions when you're losing when you're using wide angle lens. So I'm going to show you in the end how I fix that. Uh, I'll manipulate it a little bit so that we can uh, get this to look a little bit like it, it should without that distortion there because I can see it definitely in that um, I can see it definitely in the area behind here. Let me just open up this um, drawing. You can definitely see it here. See how it's thrown that, that angle out? Um, so it's thrown a little bit out and it's also thrown the line down there a little bit out so it's not perfectly straight. Um, but you can see now that if we're looking at the two, all I've got to do basically is to eliminate, oh, I shouldn't say eliminate, <laughs> uh, retouch Kerry out of this image and just use the lighting there on Kiara. So that's probably what I'm going to do, um, how I'm going to edit this image. They're both now basically done the same. The first thing I'm going to do now is to select both of these layers and I'm just going to go over to the edit menu and I'm going to go to auto align layers. Now because I've asked Kiara to keep as still as possible and I've tried not to move uh, there will always be little differences and you'll see in a minute how much I've moved even trying not to move if this was on a tripod it would have been way easier than what I've done actually for you guys right now but um, I wanted to try and do this like I said quickly keep moving and move on uh, I just didn't have the time to be dragging the tripods and stuff like that around now I'm just going to try and um, try auto and it should try and align everything up that it sees that are the same and it's just done it. All right, so now if we look, um, the only thing really that's moving, it, you can see here is Kerry is moving in and out, is the rest of the image basically is straight. This white area that you're looking at here is how much it's had to move that second image to um, get it to, to match up. So that's basically how it's actually done. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I just wanna grab the uh, Kerry's image where she's lighting Kiara up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the order around this so that I bring Kerry to the front. So now if I hide that, you'll see that Kiara's lit up on one gently, and that's what I wanted because remember, I wanted to match the ambient exposure on this. I actually wanted to make this look like she was just being lit up by that light shade, that beautiful lamp that was above her, and not be over flashed or anything else. So that's the reason why I've, I've chosen to light this the way that I have. Um, so all I'm going to do now, I'm just going to add a layer mask down the bottom, down here. Let me just make this, because you can't see what I'm doing. I've got to make this a fraction smaller. I'll just undo that. So all I did was, um, I just clicked on the layer mask, which is here, down the bottom right there. Click on that. Oh, wrong one. I click on this one, actually. So I click on that. That now has given me the ability to paint something off that area that I actually want. And I'm just going to grab the paintbrush and I just need to be, I need to make this a bit bigger and then reduce it down because I can't see the brushes. Let me just get rid of that for a minute. There we go. I think I've got to go a fraction smaller just in here. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Just so you can see the whole of Photoshop when I'm working this for you. That's close enough, I think. Okay, now I can make this a little bit wider. All right, so basically what I'm now going to do is I'm going to select the mask, so I'll make sure I'm out on the actual mask itself, and I'm going to grab the paintbrush. Now I just need to be on black down the bottom, and I can now just paint carry away. And I'm just going to base, oops, Z. make sure I'm on the mask. 
and then I can just paint Kerry out of the actual image. If I want to, like I've taken a bit out of the bottom there, I can just press X which reverses it to white and then I can paint that back in. Go back to X again and just make sure that I'm only taking out that area. Now I'm going to have to crop out the rest. So immediately you can see that I've now taken Kerry out of that image and it looks like Kiara is lit up beautifully, naturally in that environment. Um, now, once I've done that, because I'm quite happy now with how that part of it looks, I'm just going to hold the um, I'm just going to hold the Shift Command Option and press E, and that's given me a, a layer above that where it's all now combined together. So it's combined the uh, layers all below. So now basically I can start the editing that I need to use. So what I might then do is I might start to come into here and grab a curves layer and just click, click on this area over here so I can actually chew. Oh, I've got to move my head. Um, I'm always in the way. All right, let me go back. Okay, so now basically I can um, grab that curves layer. I'll just drag that in the trash and show you again. Let me drag that in the trash. Okay, so I'm going to go to here, say curves. And then I can use this dialog box here uh, and I can actually click onto the area that I want to line up. So I'm going to grab the dress for instance and I'm just going to bring that dress up just a touch. Now I don't want the whole lot to be edited here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to com uh, use command I and now I think it's alt uh, or option I think. Oh, I'm not sure on the Windows PC. Um, is there still be visible? Oh yeah, it's in the corner, you're right. Let me fix that, you are correct. I'm gonna crop that out though, So, but you're right. So let me come back to here, and I might drag this bottom one up to the top. No, that's the one where it's in. I think it's gonna be in all of them because I lit both times, yeah, it is. And I might, I could clone that out if I needed to. It's, are you talking about, oh there, you're right. Now I can see it. Thank you for that. Go back to black and go back to the brush why is it doing that? oh I'm on there oh, you just gotta to remember to be on the mask and paint that out thanks for that, yeah it was still there okay alright so I'm gonna now do the same thing I did before go shift command option E to get the lens above it so now I've got the whole lot there Again, then I'm going to bring up the Curves dialog box. So I'm going to go to Curves. I'm going to say grab this up here so that I can just make the dress a little bit brighter and also her face. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to press the Command and I. It's the same thing as going up to here and saying Select and Inverse. No, you can't do it through there, actually. Let me have a look. I'm just trying to see if I can see where the menu is. I use the Quick Keys all the time. Uh, I'm not sure. I always press Command I, and it reverses that box uh, the other way. Um, <laughs> James has just said baby blue must be your colour. <laughs> I love it. Now I'm just going to grab the brush, make sure I'm on white and then I can paint in where I need to go. So I'm just going to paint these areas in and try and bring them up so that it lightens the areas up a little bit. If I need to go a bit more I can just grab the curve and you can see how now it's just affecting Kiara. If I look, take it on and off you can see what I've done. It's just given her a nice bit of gentle fill. The other thing that I may do here as well, I might just come back to here also and say curves again, and I'm gonna grab that again, and I'm gonna darken off this background. So I'm just gonna click the background somewhere and darken that area off. And I actually quite like what that's giving me. Um, so I may go something like that. And again, when I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna go Shift, Command, Option, E again to make it a uh, layer that's all combined. Now I'm just going to go up to Fill to Sharpen, so I'm going to go up to here. Actually, I might just try some noise reduction first, and I'll show you what I use. Let me just see how noisy this is. It's pretty good, actually. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it, I think. I've found that this works really well. I'll do it for you and show you what I use as noise reduction. Um, if I'm using noise reduction, I'll go to Filter. I go down to um, MacFin. This is what I always like using. Uh, using and I use noiseless CK and I'll show you how it works just so you can see it'll take a minute to fire up let me drag it in now you can see the before and the after the before is on the other side here 
Um, this is the after. Let me grab Kiara's face, a body, so you can see what's going on. Um, if I click on light, you, you get different options that you can choose, and then you can actually scale down how much uh, you'd like to actually go. There's moderate, medium. Um, these are only obviously if you've paid for, for this software. It depends how much you want to actually go with it. I'm just going to use light, and I'm, I'm I, to be honest, noise doesn't bother me too much, particularly in this type of image because I'm. I like the actual feeling of the grain and everything in it anyway because I want it to have that vintage type feel. So I'm just going to put it on there about 50, 49 and then just say apply. It'll take a minute to process. This is the A7R, remember, so you're dealing with 42 megapixel um, file sizes here. So it will tax the machine a little bit. Okay, so then if we enlarge that up, I'll show you in a second, just so you can see how it's nice, quite nice and soft now. Uh, I'm quite happy with how that looks. Hi Gerald, how are you? Good to see you in here, mate. Then all I'm going to do now is, I'm going to flatten this because I don't need these layers anymore, but look, if you're not confident in what you're doing, you, you could leave the layers intact, but I'm just going to make this so it's a bit quicker. I'm just going to go... Um, flatten image so I'm just clicking on the little menu at the top and then just choosing flatten image you can't see it because it's outside the um, the box there now once I've done that I'm just going to duplicate that layer just so that I've got a um, oh, not that one um, I'm just going to press uh, command J just to duplicate the layer now I'm going to sharpen this so I'm going to go down to um, filter and I'm going to go sharpen and I'm going to go to, I always like unsharp mask, I often use that one. Now let me grab Kiara, I've just got to find where she is. I'm just going to try and sharpen up the face a little bit. So basically I start to play around with the radius and the threshold and just until I find that I get an amount of unsharpening that I like. Now you can see it's on the preview anyway. You can see there's a before and after when you click in. If you bring up the radius, you'll see it'll sharpen even more. Unsharp mask sharpens edges. So that's the uh, good part about using unsharp mask. Now I don't want to bring up sharpening too much. You'll see if I bring the, that threshold, it takes it away. If I bring it right to there, it sharpens up. Radius I think is the brush size, yeah. Now I'm gonna adjust this just until I'm happy with how it looks. I think around about there is going to be okay. And then I'm just going to click OK. We'll have a look at the image in a second. Someone's just asked what was the add-on. The add-on for that filter, noise reduction, was MacFun. And it's called Noiseless CK. I think you can buy it as a single um, uh, program as well, uh, um, Ahmad, if you want to. But I use that and I've found it's the best noise reduction um, program that I've ever used in Photoshop. It's just fantastic. Uh, now let's have a look and see how she looks. Nice and sharp now. Yep, I'm really happy with how that actually looks. You know, and when you think about what we started with, it, it's, it's amazing. Now, I'm just going to now grab in here and flatten the image again. Now I'm going to show you basically, thanks Wayne, I'm glad you're enjoying this. Now let's have a look too now. I'm just going to blow this up a little bit and I'll show you how I go about straightening these edges. Let me just make this a bit bigger now. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to grab this a new layer, so I'm just going Apple J. No, no, it's for, oh, it might only be for Mac actually. Yeah, it could only be for Mac. I hadn't thought about that. I'm not sure about Windows, because yeah, I'm, I'm totally Mac with my things. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what, I'm just having a look what that did actually, Apple I. Now I'm going to duplicate the layer, oops, I've just got to go back to history, I need to take that out, oh it doesn't matter, let me fix this for you, flatten it again, I was just playing with the quick keys, <laughs> I just want to duplicate the layer, alright now once I've duplicated the layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can get rid of this distortion that's actually in this image, yeah uh, someone's just said it is for Mac only, yeah so I can't help you if you're on Windows unfortunately, because I just don't have Windows. I haven't used Windows for years. Um, 
There'll be something similar though that someone may recommend when we go to questions back here. Now, once I've highlighted this actual uh, image, all I'm now going to do, and this is what I do all the time for bringing up images, like I've said to you, that this lens has made things so they're not quite square on everything. So I'm gonna try and fix it up as nice as I can um, using it. Now you can use some of the lens profile to fix things, but I honestly just prefer to do it this way and I'll show you the way that I do it. Let me just delete these uh, things. You can actually go up to, um, where are we in Photoshop? If you go to filter, you can go to lens correction, but I, I very rarely, I just don't like using them that much. Um, I'm going to go to here, go to edit. Now you must be on a new layer, so you must be on your, its own individual layer. I'm just gonna go to edit and then free transform. Now I am gonna crop off parts of the edge of this image. So I'm just gonna scroll down just so you can see what's happening a little bit. Now, because I'm on free transform, if I hold the option key, command key down, and like I said, we'll have to work out what the Windows equivalent is, I can then drag any area that I like. So I'm just gonna drag this in just a touch to try and make it so it's a little bit straighter in those areas. And I'm gonna drag this other corner down so it's a little bit straighter on that edge. Um, I'm also going to take this little bit here and drag that out so it's a little bit straighter on that edge. And let's have a look here what we need to do. Probably something like that. I can bring the grid out if I wanted to and make sure everything lines up, but I'm quite happy with that now and how that looks. So that was basically now, and you can see if I take it on and off, how it's fixed that skewing that's happened naturally with that um, uh, lens. And what I might do here, I, again, I'm just going to make a new layer on the top and let's have a look. I might just try and see if I can clone this in. So I'm going to choose just a, the cloning tool. Click here. Try and keep it as straight as possible so that I can, oh, it's not very good. It's a bit wonky. Sometimes it's tough to keep the thing straight. You can hold the shift key. But you'll get the gist in a minute. That's good enough, I think. You'll get the idea anyway. So then once I've got that sort of looking like it's right, like I would spend more time doing that, and I'm gonna redo it because it's driving me nuts. I'm a perfectionist, it drives me, I hate things when I don't do it right. Let me come back. Try again. It's harder too because I've got to do it smaller than I normally do. That's better. That's better. All right, so I got it in the end. Uh, and again, if I needed to sort of get somewhere down here, I could take that out, but I'm gonna just crop that part out that's down the bottom that you can sort of see through here. Um, you know, and I'm really quite happy with how that now looks. When you consider how the original one was, um, and I'll, I'll save this in a second and, and go, I'm just checking what someone's there saying. Simon's just said, um, great show and info, David. I'm new to photography, had the a7 III a few days and noticed when I turn my camera off, I hear sounds and hear a click shutter. Yes, it is, because it's actually, sometimes it's doing a self clean. So that's uh, something that it does do quite often, Simon. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, so there you go, and then I can start manipulating this if I liked. I could, I could, you know, bring a bit more contrast in if I wanted to go to curves. Um, start to, I always use this uh, dollar box where I can manually control how much is, is around, you know, and I can start to make things a little bit darker if I liked. Uh, I might want to do some selective burning, and I can do that by grabbing up here, and if I said new layer, um, I can choose, I'll just show you what I'm choosing here. I can grab soft light, Click in fill with soft light, and I'll show you what this does in a minute. If I'm on black, it will make things dark. So for instance, if I came through here and painted, you'll get that. Actually, I'm on the wrong tool. I've got to be on brush. Um, if if I, I'm on black, you can see I can drop the opacity down, and then I can make areas selectively a little bit darker if I wanted to, like come through the carpet area, a little bit through here, uh, and stuff like that. So that's how you would do that if you wanted to get it to look sort of a bit darker and mysterious. The more you paint on it, obviously, um, 
the darker it will be. You can also then adjust the opacity to take that out so it's not obvious. And that's one thing you always must do is bring the opacity down to give it a, a bit of a kick. I can do the same thing again and make a new layer. And again, I'm going to use soft light again and fill with soft light. And I'm going to choose white this time. And I'm just going to give a little bit of a kick through here. And again, if that's too much, you can just drop the opacity down until you sort of get the look that you like. Again, I could give her a little bit of shape just on this side, Kiara, just to bring it in a little bit. Because remember, the light's naturally coming in through that window through the side, so I could grab just a touch of fill just on that side. Uh, and again, you'd reduce the opacity of that to make it look like it was nice and authentic. Look at the detail the A9, uh, the A7R3 gets. It's amazing when you think about it. when this is, you know, cropped right up. Um, and there you go. I mean, I'm actually really happy with that. So let me just go file, flatten image, and I'm going to save it. We'll close this image. Go back to Lightroom. And we'll have a look at what we've done. Let me just make this bigger so we can now just see it. All right, so we started out with um, the originals, which were the mix. Let me just take these back to how they were. When you think it, the recovery on these cameras is unbelievable when you think about it. So, which one was it? That was the original there. So basically this is the original here when you're looking at how we started out and then you can see from uh, the crop that we've been given here, this is the one that now I've edited where Kerry has now been taken out. I then just grab the crop tool and bring this up to where I like the, the look of the image. And then we have the final basic image that we've got there. So that's, that's sort of how I would edit it. And when you think really all I've done is I've taken Kerry out of the equation, which you look at her through here. Um, so, you know, I mean, honestly, it's very simple if, if you look at the actual task itself. Um, but, you know, I'm really happy with the results on that. And then you can obviously play around in Lightroom if you want to add a little bit of clarity, if you wanted to bring some stuff in there. Um, play around with the blacks and the shadows to get the look, the final look that you actually wanted. And again, like I said, I'm very happy with that when you think that's blown up. Then I just did the two versions of that, which I had one version like that, and I had one version which was one by one, which I cropped that um, light out the top, and you can see that I've basically got that there. So that is just done with two ice lights. It's allowing for Sony's recovery in the situation to bring that back in. The main thing that I actually wanted to protect in this was to protect those highlights in the lights that were above. Uh, and also in the um, um, window, which were the important things to, for me. I'm just going back to as shot so you can see the, what I was talking about with the, the window. So they're the main things that I've actually wanted to protect in this was the uh, window light, which was like so important for me, and those lights which were above, which are still clipping just a touch so I could take them out if I wanted to. And I'm really happy with that result. I probably will like I said, make it a bit more vintage by playing around, but um, I'm really happy with that. So let me know what you think too in the comments down below on that if you're not uh, here in the live chat because I'd love to know what you think. Um, yeah, the detail is amazing when you think about what we started out with, uh, Re Reuven. When we've gone from this original image, which was there, you think the dynamic range that you've recovered out of that when you're shooting, and this is the thing you've got to realize when you're dealing with the Sony cameras, that your, your dynamic range is so powerful that you can bring things back, you know, that, that were starting out like that, and you've ended up with an image that's like that. Now, it took two shots to do it because I had to light her up. If I only dealt with Kiara from that original shot to bring up everything up, She's a little bit flat, like, and that's the issue with her there. She's not lit up enough, so that's the reason why I had to bring the ice lights in to add that contrast that you're now seeing back uh, where you see it here, where she looks like she's lit a little bit. And that's all I wanted. I only wanted a fraction of lighting to come through here um, as well. Let me just come back to questions because some people are asking questions. Uh, so it's 39 minutes for questions. Let me just put that in 30 
six minutes. Um, yeah, so Raven said, amazing detail, thanks. Jeffrey said, looks great, thank you. Um, what else have we got? Jura said, if you don't have ice light but you want to light this at once with two 400 flash heads. Now, that, I really don't think Josh, uh, Joris that flash heads would have worked with this situation because the, the prob I had it. I had the Profoto B1 with me right there um, next to me. And the problem was, no matter how soft, it was so dark and moody in that room that the problem was I was going to leave shadows on the wall behind her. There was no way of getting rid of it uh, with where I had to angle it. We were working in a very tight space. The, the real way of doing this was with continuous lighting that I've just showed you. Uh, I don't think flashlights you could turn down enough to get a soft enough light in this scenario because we were dealing with such low light. And it would have become a little bit flashy and that was the issue. I did try and take a couple, I think, with a flash and I wasn't happy with how it looked. That's why I decided to light this up deliberately underexposed quite severely to keep the detail in the highlights and the shadows and then bring that back in later on, but just have enough of those ice lights to light her up again to give that detail. Um, which camera did you... I used the A7R2 for this one, M Spates. I didn't use the A7 III for this. I used the A7R2. I was shooting all day, um, and I was doing video at the same time. Um, I, was, I was using the A7 III at this stage for video, um, and I wanted to do a quick shot without grabbing it off the gimbal. So I used the A7R3. I also had the A9 there too on the day as well. So I was using multiple cameras. Um, all of them would have been ample at doing this because all of them would have had the recovery that I could have brought this back. Um, probably the A7 III would have done even a little bit better because I, the dynamic range is slightly better. So if I'd shot with this, with this with the A7 III instead, I probably would have got a little bit of a better result than what I actually got. Um, I would have got a little bit of a better result than what I've got from... Um, using the a7r2 um, because like i said that dynamic range would have given me a little bit more that i could have got back um, yeah so that's the main thing but like i said I, i'm so happy with how this has has come out i couldn't have done these sort of shots years ago this is one area where the latest technology is is enabling you to get images that you couldn't have possibly got uh, a while back uh, and that's one of the beauties of this because I would have had to compromise and I would have had to bring flashes. I could have done it, but I would have had to have brought multiple gear around to try and make it match the environment. And I still don't think it would have been as beautifully matching this environment, you know, as what I've been able to keep. Because, you know, like I said, the important thing for me was keeping all the detail, you know, in the lights and stuff. Like I, I wanted to keep all of that. The red's just the clipping. Um, I wanted to keep all of that detail in the lights there without blowing that out out away you know and i wanted to keep all of the like the detail in the window like i didn't want to lose any of this because that was quite strong light coming in through there um, and i didn't want to lose any of that and that's one of the big differences sometimes between um, making an image look really beautiful i believe is to try and match ambient backgrounds without having um, uh, losing those highlight areas that are the important parts of it. And remember, I've said to you before that keeping that difference between the shadow and the highlights is the most important thing. We've still got shadows in this and we've still got highlights in this, but it's more balanced and it doesn't look like it's been lit by a strobe, keeping it look, you know, not real. Um, Ralph said, great demonstration. Thanks, Ralph. M. Spate said, I have the A7R2 and I absolutely love it. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, that, there's no reason why I'm going to get rid of it either. It's, it's gorgeous. And I've just showed you how much recovery and everything you can do with that. And the low light focusing on that was unbelievable. That's using autofocus and it was that dark and it's still focused. So it's showing you how well the Sonys can focus, even with an F4 lens that this is. And remember, I'm dealing with an F4 lens here. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm really happy with how... The, the whole image has is, is, is turned out, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, love it actually, I think it, it's beautiful, there's still more work I'm going to do on this yet before I post it, um, but, um, you know, as a guide to just show you quickly how and what you can do, the, the ice lights are just incredible, it's given that be beautiful soft light that I've got through there, you wouldn't know looking at her that she's been lit up by lights, and that's where the ice lights are so good. Um, just coming back to questions. Um, 
Joris said, great explanation. It's true, soft boxes will kill the atmosphere real fast due to the directional light. And that's the problem, Joris, yeah. That's what I was dealing with when I tried to do it with the Pro Photo. It just was not giving the same look. I probably could do this if I had a massive soft box, uh, but it still would have infected, uh, affected the environment. With Kerry using the ice lights, I was controlled. It was very subtle. The ice lights power can come up and down, and it's a very diffuse light. And remember, I'm not sponsored by Ice Light. I'm just saying how much they work for me. Um, but it's given you an idea about how beautiful and directional you can bring the light in to make it look like she's matching in that background without being lit. And I hate, I really don't like images where you can tell they've been lit. And that's the thing that I always try and avoid is to try and balance ambient exposure with uh, the flash exposure or the, the uh, continuous light exposure like I've used here. So, you know, it's so important. And, and if you want to take your photography to another level, this is the type of thing that you've got to do. And people will wonder how on earth you lit it. They, they will not know. If I hadn't shown you, you know, you just wouldn't know how it was actually lit. And that's the thing that you want to try and get out of this, is to try and make it someone think, how on earth did that person do that? Well, anyway, I've showed you. So I'm showing you my secrets. I don't hold anything back from you guys. All right, guys. Um, please, if you can, give me a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. There's 39 watching now, so if you could please give me a thumbs up. That means a lot to me because other people will watch this later on. Any questions that you have to this, leave it down below. Um, and obviously, I'll, I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Join the Facebook group too. Um, if you are thinking about buying ice lights at all, if you please just use my affiliate link I've got down below through Amazon, and at least I'll get back a little kick from that. Um, that's just through Amazon though, it's not through uh, Westcott Ice Lights, but um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll catch you all again soon for the next video guys. Bye for now. Have a great weekend too by the way.